Hey guys, so now that you've solved a bunch of rotation questions using energy and a whole bunch of other questions using torque, you might have noticed that some of these questions are very similar. For example, we did yo-yo equations for both energy and torque. Now, what I want to do in this video, which is really, really critical, is do an overview of these two methods so you know which one to use in different situations. Let's check it out. So, I want to remind you real quick that some linear motion problems we could solve them using um, either F equals MA and motion equations. Remember, we have those three to four motion equations, kinematics equations. So we could use a combination of these two methods to solve them. I'm going to call this uh, method one. Or we could have used the conservation of energy equation, method two. We typically, uh, most people learn this one first, and then they learn this one. Uh, number two is usually better because you have one equation um, instead of having two equations and instead of having to worry about which out of the three to four motion equations to pick from. All right, so I want to show you this in, in linear motion, and then we're going to bring it back to rotation um, real quick, right? So if you have a block here and the block slides on an incline, um, and let's assume that's frictionless, um, there are two ways you can find a velocity at the bottom. So if you want to find V final at the bottom here, there's two ways. The first way, I'm going to use the, the first way here to be F equals MA, in equations, so motion equations. So the first way would be with motion, and what you would do, just like any motion problem, you would list your variables, v initial, v final, um, a, delta x, delta t. Okay, let's say they start, let's say it starts from rest, so v initial equals zero, v final is what we're looking for, acceleration we don't have, delta x and delta t. Let's say we have the initial height, so and the angle, let's say these are given, so from these you would be able to find your delta x, right? Because h equals delta x sine of theta. So if I give you these two, you can find this one, okay? So you would have some delta x as well. You wouldn't have delta theta, that would be your ignored variable. Um, but notice that to solve this, you need to know two things. So you would know V initial, you could find delta X, you would be missing acceleration. So what you would do to find acceleration is you would write sum of all forces equals MA. And in this case, the only force that matters here is MGX. You have MGX pulling this thing down the plane. Um, MGY will cancel with normal and there are no other forces. So when I write sum of all forces in the x-axis, I have mgx equals max, mgx is mg sine of theta, and equals ma, we're just gonna call it a. The mass is cancel, and I'm left with an acceleration. So at this point, I know the acceleration, I can plug it in here, okay? I know the acceleration, I can plug it in there. And I can use the fact that the only, um, the, my ignored variable is delta t to know that I have to use the second equation, which is v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta t. It's the only equation, I'm sorry, delta x, the only equation that doesn't have delta t. So I can solve here, I can cancel this out, and the final velocity will be the square root of 2. The acceleration is right here, g sine of theta, and I have delta x. I can rewrite delta x if we want to. Um, notice that if I rewrite delta x, delta x is h divided by sine of theta. And if I do this, look what happens, h sine of theta. The sines cancel, and I have that the final velocity is simply the square root of 2g, um, square root of 2gh, okay? So you could do this using a combination of motion equations and F equals MA. Kind of long, it's much better to do this using energy. To do this using energy, we're just going to use the conservation of energy equation, okay? So K initial plus U initial plus work non-conservative equals K final plus U final. K initial is zero because it starts from rest. I have some height in the beginning, so this is MGH initial. Work non-conservative is the work done by you. You're not doing anything, you're just watching, plus the work done by friction. There is no friction, so this is zero. 
Um, at the end, we have kinetic energy because we have linear motion. So this is half mv final squared. And there is no potential energy at the end because you're on the, at the lowest points. Cancel the masses. And v final is the square root of 2 gh initial. Okay, This height here is obviously the initial. I end up at the same place. So given the choice of methods, you would obviously choose the energy way of solving things because it is better. Now, it's better for, for velocity. If you're looking for acceleration, you would have to use f equals ma to find acceleration, okay? So similar to how there's two ways to solve problems, we're going to have the same thing in rotational motion. Some problems, instead of being solved in rotation, instead of being solved um, with f equals ma in motion equations, will be solved the torque equals i alpha in motion equations. And we're also going to have problems that we're going to be able to solve using conservation of energy. Okay? If you have the choice, which most of the time, unfortunately, you don't, you're going to want to pick this one, right? Because it's easier. But it really depends on what you're being asked or what you're being given, or actually an end on what you're being given, right? So generally, you will use torque equals I alpha if you're either being asked or given A or alpha. So if I ask for A, you're going to use it, or if I give you A and ask for something else, you're going to use torque equals I alpha. Conservation of energy is better for problems that are asking or giving velocity V or velocity omega, okay? You're always going to use motion equations if you're looking for time, time delta t, um, or if you need time to solve the problem somehow, okay? So you're always going to need motion equations. So I think this is really, really important to remember, and it helps a lot make uh, a combination of all these topics easier to work through. Sometimes, however, sometimes, however, you're not going to have a choice. You'll be asked to do this in a specific way. Even if you could have used an easier method, um, sometimes a question will say, you know, using Newton's laws, which means um, F equals MA or torque equals I alpha, do this. So what professors will do sometimes is force a method upon you to make sure that you can't use an easier method. Okay? So I want to do a quick example here of how um, questions may look almost identical, but require different methods to solve. So a yo-yo spins in, um, around itself as it falls, something like this. The yo-yo is falling and spinning at the same time. So it has an A and a V, and it has an alpha and an omega. Find its acceleration after dropping two meters. Find its acceleration after dropping two meters. We cannot use, um, we cannot use conservation of energy to find acceleration. If you look at the conservation of energy equation, there's no A in there, right? So we would have to use, to find acceleration, uh, a combination of F equals MA, torque equals I alpha, okay? Um, the fact that it drops two meters doesn't matter, right? The acceleration is constant throughout. This is just extra, extra information. Here, a yo-yo falls, and by the way, the reason you use both of these is because a yo-yo has linear acceleration and angular acceleration at the same time, okay? Now here, we wanna know the speed after dropping two meters. Both pieces of information are important, and we're going to use energy, okay? And then here, we wanna know how long does it take to drop two meters? Drop two meters is delta Y, and how long does it take is delta T. Because I'm being asked for time, you have to use motion equations, okay? But it's very likely that motion equations is not going to be enough because to do this, you're gonna have to have, you're gonna have to have acceleration. Let me list my five motion variables. Let me fit it here. Let's say you're dropping from rest. Um, you don't know the final velocity. You don't know the acceleration. Um, you're given delta Y and you're looking for delta T. So you're going to have to either find V final using energy or you're going to use, um, you're going to use F equals MA and torque equals I alpha to find acceleration so that you can use motion equations. So here to solve this, you're going to use motion plus and um, either F equals MA or energy. Okay, depending which way you want to go. 
All right, so let me get out of the way. So anyway, I hope this makes sense. Um, now that we've seen these two things, you might get some questions uh, where you sort of need to know both, and I wanted to make this a little bit simpler. You might have noticed these questions are very similar, but they do require different methods. So I think this is crucial for you to master. I hope it makes sense. And, and if you have any questions, please let me know because I want to make sure you guys are good at this. All right, that's it for this one. Let's keep going.